We're going to get started in just a couple minutes. Please do me a favor and share this stream out with anybody that you think might want to come hang out with us and talk YouTube and uh, probably a little current events. Crazy world going on out there. Hi, and welcome to Creator Fundamentals. My name is Dan Courier, and it is my mission to simplify YouTube so you and I can grow together. Welcome, everybody, to our regularly scheduled live stream. If you're new to the live stream, we do this every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern. So consider clicking that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you're alerted to future live streams. Good to see everybody coming and hanging out. We're going to talk a little bit of YouTube and obviously what's going on in the world. So much has changed since our last live stream, which of course was last Wednesday. Uh, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more. Uh, I guess technically Wednesday wasn't our last live stream. For those of you who happened to tune in, I believe it was on Sunday. I did an impromptu live stream uh, outside, but uh, definitely a lot has changed. We're going to talk about that. Uh, the uh, current issue on uh, everybody's mind certainly is coronavirus and COVID-19 and how that's just completely disrupting everybody's daily life. Uh, we're going to get into that a little bit. Uh, I had some significant uh, uh, scheduling changes as an impact to me. For those of you who may know, I am hosting a conference called People of Video which up until Sunday was a live event in Albany, New York. But unfortunately, based on uh, the uh, recommendations of the Center for Disease Control, that has now become an online event. But we're still going to have a bunch of amazing speakers share their knowledge with us uh, here online May 2nd and 3rd. So if perhaps you were interested in attending People of Video and you couldn't do it uh, in person, now you have the opportunity to go to peopleofvideo.com and grab a ticket for the online event. Uh, it's going to be uh, the same speakers that we had in person. They're going to share that knowledge. And we're also going to try to do some other things including live streams to mix those in uh, to be able to share some uh, feedback opportunities during that uh, weekend, May 2nd and 3rd, 2020. So uh, hope to see you there and uh, we're going to make the best of it. And I think it's going to be a really exciting online event. It actually gives us the ability to, eat, to reach out to even more speakers. Uh, so there may be some speakers who are uh, sharing their knowledge at People of Video Online that we weren't able to fit into the schedule in person. So that's exciting as well. I'm uh, going to jump in the chat uh, and say hello. But in just a minute, I realized that uh, the heater just turned on and it's kind of loud. And if it's not loud, it's going to get really warm in here. So... I'm going to fix that, and then we're going to jump into the chat and say hello to everybody. Stay tuned. No idea how the heater got on or why it was running at this uh, time of day, but uh, it would smoke me out here in a heartbeat. It, I could already feel how hot it was getting in here. But All right, let's see what we got going on here in the chat. Good to see everybody. I see Construction Cronies inside the lab, PC Tech. Good to see you guys. Muhammad Shah is out there as well. Mad Godzilla Comedy. We have Paul Peck Drywall Tube. Great to see you, Paul. Uh, we have Sango 152 and Carrie Ann Wright, Nerdy Rodent. Uh, let's see, Erica Joy. Awesome Gold Minecart. Uh, I Moataz. Uh, we are Lego, Meep God, and Harley. Great to see you guys out there in the live stream tonight. Great to have you. Some familiar faces, some new faces out there. But uh, yeah, a little bit crazy going on out there um, in the world today. And as I mentioned, it's already impacted me in a number of different ways. 
Uh, and uh, hopefully everybody out there is healthy and safe. Let me know in the chat how many of you guys are uh, doing the social distancing thing and are basically confined to your house for the next couple of weeks. Let me know in the chat uh, if you are uh, in fact hanging out at home indefinitely, whether that means working from home or if you are doing this full time, whether you're going out of your way to not go out and interact with large crowds. Joe's Firewood videos out there as well. Good to see you. Um, let's see. 5.30 a.m. in India. 8.05 Orangeville, Michigan. Drawing with Retro Samson. Welcome to the live stream. Good to see you. All right. So again, I'm using this new interface, which I, for the most part, like. I can't, something feels a little bit weird about the numbers. I don't know if it's slightly delayed. Um, it's really hard to tell. But the one thing that I have noticed is that the uh, stream strength seems to be either, it's become a lot more efficient to live stream on YouTube, where you don't actually have to, um, you don't have to have super killer internet to make it work, uh, because I have, seen that it is uh, showing excellent connection these days uh, since moving to that new system. So either my internet suddenly has been more consistent or the new process of going live on YouTube is uh, more efficient on their end. But uh, um, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Welcome Zugo Mugo to the live stream. Somebody was just talking about an earthquake. I think it was Harley. Uh, if you uh, happen to miss that, you can get the details from, from Harley. Uh, Carrie Ann Wright, we're at home. State of emergency here. Everything closed but grocery stores and pharmacies. Yeah, so since last Wednesday, since I came to you live the last time, um, we've had all kinds of changes. The kids are out of school probably until um, at least April. And uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm in upstate New York. So New York is pretty much on complete shutdown. All the colleges are closed. The schools are closed. Uh, and uh, a lot of the stores have been closed. They've basically made it so bars in New York um, can only do takeout. And uh, one of the interesting things that they've done here in New York State is they've allowed... Um, allowed takeout orders to include alcohol. And that's something that uh, has not been the case for the most part here in New York. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, let's see, 5.7 earthquake in Utah or 5.2 in California. See, Zugamu was all over the earthquakes. 5.7 in Utah. Uh, what part of Utah was that? I happen to know a lot of people that live in Utah. Uh, I normally work and make content from home, but when I have uh, delivered firewood, I have to head out in the world. I no longer shake hands. I elbow uh, pump customer. Yep, absolutely. Benny Camerata, welcome to the live stream. Good to see you. Uh, Sav fam for Sav. Uh, let's see. What is uh, We are in Ontario, Canada. Only take out here too. Yeah, that seems to be the case uh, for a number of people. Um, yes, we have liquor off sales. Year two, did Hawaii get a tour? Oh, I saw something about Hawaii and tornadoes. I didn't even know that was a possibility. Um, let's see. New York is a good place for the most part, except, except when we're full of virus. It's fantastic. Um, so what do you guys think so far? We're basically in, I mean, at least here in New York, we are in... I mean, today's Wednesday. It's technically the third day that I've been working from home. Uh, I have a full-time career that I normally leave the house for in the morning, uh, and I've been doing uh, that work from home. First day, got to admit, I was super antsy, just didn't feel comfortable working from home, but I've kind of settled in and adjusted pretty well. Um, and yeah, we do our, we are doing our best. My wife uh, works for a, um, a medical office, so she still goes to work every day. But uh, I am, am working from home. I have the, um, the good fortune to have a job that I can pretty much do everything I need to do on a computer from anywhere. So uh, for that reason, it's helpful. Um, but I certainly know there's a lot of people out there that are 
uh, not in the same boat. And when like the bars and things close that they're basically out of wages. So that is a tough situation for sure. Oh, I see a lot of talk about earthquakes and tornadoes. Hey, if you are new to the live stream and you have a question relating to YouTube or uh, your channel, that kind of thing, just tag at Creator Fundamentals in the chat and I will do my best to answer those questions for you. And also for anybody interested, I will also do this. Since things have changed and People of Video is now an online event, you can head over to peopleofvideo.com and grab a ticket if you would like to absorb all that knowledge from all those speakers that we can now share uh, beyond the capacity of the venue, uh, what was going to be the venue, uh, to as many people uh, as interested now. So that's definitely a bonus. Uh, whereas we have, were limited to about 100, maybe like 105 people was going to be the max that we were going to do in person. Now we have the opportunity uh, to extend that to people outside the country, anywhere. Uh, so if you are going to find yourself with uh, some free time on your hands, you're probably going to be spending a lot of time in your home. Uh, and I really do think that this may still be... Um, an issue here going into May, especially in my neck of the woods, but uh, uh, you do have the option to grab a ticket to people of video and at least for that weekend, be able to take in that knowledge and get the information you need to grow a brand and business around your YouTube channel. So I encourage you to come hang out with us online now for the people of video conference. Uh, how to fully and intelligently capitalize on a shout out from a big channel within the same niche. So generally speaking, shout outs aren't all that uh, they're hyped up to be. In a lot of cases, they don't go a long way in helping your channel. Um, if you have somebody that is in your niche and it's very specific and it's the same audience, obviously you're going to probably get some kind of boost from them. I would say the biggest way to capitalize on that is if you do see that influx, um, then obviously that's a prime time to get out new content because you're going to have people that are fresh to your channel looking for content related to the same type of content they were seeing on that other channel and yours. And they're much more likely to uh, be aware of your videos as they come out. So uh, you might be able to step up video production in the short term, see how people are responding to it and uh, try to... Uh, get as mo uh, as much momentum as you can from any influx you get from uh, that shout out. But it really has to be very specific. Um, I've certainly had, uh, you know, my channel mentioned on a bunch of other channels and rarely it doesn't do much. I've had maybe one or two channels that are very uh, much related to mine that have helped in the short term. It's usually like a day, uh, you know, the day it happens, there's a little bit of a bump, um, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to be a game changer unless you're just making absolutely amazing content and for some reason people haven't found you yet. But uh, a lot of times it, uh, it's nice for that little bump and uh, you know just try to um, deliver value to those new people who are subscribing to your channel. Um, what should you work on YouTube normal account? brand account. Uh, the preference is, uh, I would certainly recommend to do your channel on a brand account. Basically the brand account just gives you the ability down the road after you grow a bigger channel and you want to bring people on who can help uh, manage your channel. You might have hire somebody to do work on videos, etc. Having the brand channel allows you to grant permissions to other uh, Google accounts to come in and uh, do uh, work on their channel. So uh, setting up the brand channel right from the beginning is definitely helpful. Plus it separates it from your actual Google account, uh, which is, you know, typically your name and the icon associated with your Google account versus your brand channel, which can be completely separate and different. Um, so I always recommend brand channels if you're, when you're starting out and you definitely uh, get a little more flexibility with the brand channel. You can, if you start out as a standard channel and you want to switch to brand channel, there is actually a process to do that. The only caveat to that that I'm aware of is, and I'm not exactly sure why they do this, but you lose all of your comments. So any comments you made on your channel, 
um, go away when you switch to the brand channel. So a lot of times you'll have like broken conversations where you'll see like one side of the conversation in the comments, but not the other because your stuff disappears. Um, Paul Peck, I'd put your best converting video in the trailer section of your channel. Definitely, that is a great strategy in general, whether you're trying to, oh, I didn't see, let's see, power. Yep, that was the same one. Um, generally speaking, that is the uh, a good way to go. Um, depending on what you're trying to gain, if you're trying to get more subscribers uh, or, or you know, grow your audience, getting those videos that uh, perform the best in front of people on your channel is a good way to bring in uh, traffic. I like to do, um, a lot of people will put their most popular content on their YouTube channel. One of the other things you can do inside your playlists is determine your videos that do the best at certain things. So if you're trying to up your subscribers, you can take a look at the videos that are converting subscribers the best, and you can kind of front load your playlists that way. So the videos that people see when they first come to your channel are those videos that are proven to help you grow uh, your audience. So that's definitely a great idea. Harley just refreshed my YouTube uh, dashboard and went over 10,000 in the last couple hours. Been a long haul. Awesome. Congrats. Fantastic. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Patrick Hollett. Hello and welcome to the live stream. Good to see you. Uh, what are good practices to gain subscribers? Natural growth is incredibly slow at first. So are there places recommended to advertise? Uh, I would definitely never advertise to grow your audience. Um, advertising is much more suited if you actually have a product or service to sell and you're trying to get conversions. But I have yet to see anybody who bought attention um, and built a, um, an engaged audience. The yes, it is hard. That's why, uh, you know, anything worth doing is going to be difficult. Uh, you need to figure out the right way to do that, because if you just go out and pay to get an audience, then you you still haven't learned anything. You're just throwing money at probably something that's bringing in a bunch of fake people to subscribe on your channel and you're focusing on the wrong things. You don't want to focus on a vanity metric like how many subscribers you are have because subscribers themselves don't do anything for you. What you actually want to do is learn how to make engaging content that brings people in. My brother who started a YouTube channel, uh, he... Uh, was creating content. This channel's called This Life Outdoors. He did some, he built a cabin on his property out of pallet wood. And within a few months, he reached a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. So the idea that it's just hard in the beginning, it really has a lot more to do with finding your audience, engaging with your audience and delivering value to your audience. When you learn how to do that, then getting subscribers and watch time and all those other things isn't hard. Uh, it's not always as fruitful as you want it to be, uh, but that's the absolutely best way to grow a channel. Trying to buy stuff is just, it. you might as well quit now because uh, buying attention is never going to get you what you ultimately, well, at least I would hope what you ultimately want is a uh, organically grown channel that has an audience that people come back to watch your content on. Mm-mm-mm. I am struggling to go watch hours. What would you recommend me to do? Um, again, when you're having trouble gaining watch hours, obviously I don't know how much content that you're making. Hopefully you're on a regular schedule, putting out videos on a regular basis. That's obviously huge. Trying to make improvements with each video is also really big because the better you uh, are able to make that content, the longer people are going to watch your videos. Try to understand which of your videos perform the best, figure out what's different about them compared to your your videos that aren't performing in terms of keeping people watching and just keep making tweaks until you find what your audience is interested in. Uh, you obviously want to keep people's attention. You don't just want like a single scene. Uh, people have very short attention spans. So you kind of want to, uh, you know, get their attention by changing the screen uh, pattern interrupts, I believe they call them. 
where it's just something that happens on a regular basis throughout your video that uh, kind of shocks people back into paying attention so they don't drift off and leave your video. Soul Moons Rising, welcome to the live stream. Good to see you. Great to see a few of our members in the live stream. If you are interested in supporting Creator Fundamentals, we do have memberships now. You can check them out on the Members tab uh, on YouTube. And one of the things I was thinking about offering is, so right now to attend, um, to attend People of Video online, it's $99. I was thinking of giving free access to the online event uh, in the top tier membership here on Creator Fundamentals, uh, which is $24.99 a month. Um, that's something that uh, I may implement here in the next few days. Uh, Going to work out some, some details on that, but uh, that might be a cool thing for um, that level membership. If you want to also gain access to People of Video Online, uh, we could include that as well. And as Construction Cronies just demonstrated, there's also some custom uh, emojis in there that you get for being a uh, member of the Creator Crew. One of which, of course, is the Creator Crew emoji. Uh, or icon, whatever you want to call them. I guess they're not expressions, so... Oh, Mason Parks, what's your take on Gary V's dollar eighty strategy? Isn't that um, you're gonna have to remind me what that is because I know I've read it before a while ago, um, but I feel like it was like an insane amount of work. Isn't that basically like trying to? So reaching out to a ton of people or commenting on a ton of videos every day or something like that. YouTube continues to ignore the issue. I was demonetized for reused content, but funny how they did it right after I complained. Yeah, I mean, the idea that YouTube um, has any personal grudges against anybody is not, uh, they let's say, demonetized over a year ago, I monetized my enemy who death threat and dox me and monetize the video that he doxed me in over a year ago. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a process to, to report that kind of thing, but YouTube is so massive that the idea that there's any like personal, um, feelings attached to anything they do, if anything there, it's just a big machine um, that uh, probably doesn't care about anybody's feelings and things just happen based on an automated process. So um, I have felt that frustration where I have a channel that actually came to, that I discovered this channel because they came to my channel and left a profanity-laced um, message out of the blue. So I went to their channel and it was actually a channel that in my mind should not be on YouTube because it was basically adult theme content over the top of my little pony videos. So I did my best to report that channel to YouTube repeatedly and nothing has ever happened to that channel. So uh, they didn't even age gate any of the videos. And I've talked to people who were subscribers of Creator Fundamentals who actually uh, had their kids stumble upon that and um, to me, it's not something that should be out there, especially non age gated. So any kid can stumble upon it, but, um, yeah, it's definitely frustrating at times because you think they would want to jump on those things, but for whatever reason, they don't take action, uh, either whether it's, they just have too much workflow and trying to get stuff to their attention, uh, is difficult, but, uh, um, I do feel the, uh, the pain on that. It's just a matter of trying to, um, you know, get it in front of humans. A lot of the stuff that happens is is just automated. Fully involved media group. Good evening to you as well. Just posted a video on how EMS agency here in Charlottesville, North Carolina has prepared for COVID-19. Hopefully, uh, COPPA shuts them down. You know, you would think so. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know that even COPPA is really the right the right thing to get them because cop is more interested in 
taking information from children uh, versus trying to target. Um, I, I assume they're, I would hope they're not actually trying to target children, just, I guess, I don't know. I'm not really sure who that target audience is for, for that type of content. Um, but in any event, uh, I would hope YouTube would do something about it, but. Um, yeah, so here's my understanding about trying to get anything monetized. So YouTube came out and they said, hey, we realize that a lot of people are um, going to be talking about coronavirus and COVID-19 and that probably just demonetized this video. But um, they're like, oh, well, a select group of channels are going to be able to monetize this content, which basically means most of us are immediately going to be demonetized or have our monetization limited if we even mention coronavirus or COVID-19. That just seems to be the case right now. I assume they made that statement so they could take, so they could allow really big channels that make a lot of money to ha talk about those. Maybe like Philip DeFranco, for example. Um, but us little guys, I don't think we are going to be able to keep those videos monetized based on um, uh, what I heard uh, from YouTube so far. Yeah, and I don't know that the con the, the content doesn't necessarily matter. I think the algorithm is all automatically going to target those uh, terms. I mean, you could dispute it and see what happens, see if it gets in front of a human. But again, even you, the other thing to realize, and YouTube has come out and said this as well, with coronavirus, the number of humans that are actively involved in the process of taking a look at videos has been significantly diminished. So you have much less chance now of getting your video in front of a human because uh, it is probably going to automatically target every video that mentions that. And there's not nearly enough people to be able to look at the individual ones that get disputed. So I don't know how, how fruitful that's going to be. Maybe they were more going for the more credible channels. Yeah, but credibility is a completely arbitrary kind of thing. So um, I personally am not a fan of YouTube's language that talks about uh, elevating authoritative channels because I believe deciding what authoritative is is completely subjective. The idea that they're going to raise uh, mainstream media uh, uh, to uh, attention of everybody, given what mainstream media has become these days, which is basically, you know, like TMZ, it's all for shock value. Um, I don't think is the best, uh, the best bet. And they also came out during that same uh, notice from Susan, uh, and basically said that they're going to um, push down content that doesn't break the rules, but is close to breaking the rules. So they basically left the, the path open to have a little bit too much flexibility in completely um, uh, adjusting who who gets exposure and who doesn't. It's kind of a crazy, a crazy setup. Yeah, Paul mentions, yep, YouTube is shorthanded because there's, there's less... Uh, there's less humans and more AI because, you know, that's what we want. <laughs> we want less people and more computers. Um, what are the plans now going to an online event for people video? Really excited about it being online. So it's going to be uh, we're still going to hold it May 2nd and 3rd. Uh, we're currently working with a platform to host all of that and be able to release the content um, during that time. And uh, we're planning uh, still um, exploring additional ways above and beyond each of the presentations to be able to engage during those days, whether that be live streams, interviews with the speakers, etc., to bring as much value as we can uh, through that online setup. So um, I still think we're going to be able to bring a ton of value and it opens it up to so many more people who just simply weren't going to be able to make it. And this way everybody can say, uh, stay safe and healthy at home and still access uh, all of that content across those two days. Yeah, and there's definitely been a lot of criticism about how media and certain outlets have handled 
the reporting of this. Um, I think at the end of the day, if we just focus on recommendations from the CDC and uh, the World Health Organization, then we uh, then we can kind of draw our own conclusions. But there is so much stuff out there. Every time I see somebody share something on Facebook from some website I've never heard of, I get a little suspicious. But uh, that's just kind of the nature of the beast these days where news or what used to be news, which was basically providing information as it happened, uh, has now become more of a entertainment type setup where uh, all the channels are trying to get um, as many views as possible. Meredith, Marsh, VidPro Mom, what's going on? Welcome to the live stream. Great to see you. Uh, Meredith is one of the speakers of People of Video, so welcome. Good to have you in the chat. Uh, we're talking all things here, YouTube, a little bit of coronavirus, um, the fact that most people are um, barricaded in their houses <laughs> waiting for this whole uh, strange thing to pass us over. But, uh, you know, got to make the most of it. That's what we're doing. Excited to have uh, people a video online. Excited to have Meredith as part of the event. And uh, um, yeah, so many people are going to be able to tune in from home. And I'm really excited about the platform we're going to use for that. We're going to see more details about that uh, coming soon, as soon as we work out all that. But um, it should give us everything we need to put on an awesome online event. All right. Let's just, uh, I have a channel named Four Jokers, and I used to upload mainly live videos. But how can I add my intro and outro in my live video? So if you're using something like OBS, which is Open Broadcast Studio, that is a third-party software that you can download for free. And you can actually use it to live stream to YouTube. So what you would actually do um, is you could preload your intro and outro videos uh, as a scene in OBS. And then when you go live, uh, what I would normally do is I would probably go live. If you have anybody out there say, Hey, I'm going to trim this for replays. So, you know, bear with me and then kick off your intro. Um, let it transition over, pop it back. And as soon as that's done, go straight in, do your content like you normally would. And when you're done doing that, then uh, hit the uh, um, the next scene to pull in your outro, whatever it is you're doing at the end of your videos. And then after that, you can engage with your audience and have a conversation. Uh, I think that's a strong way to take what would otherwise be just a, a live stream of you chatting with people and being able to turn it into content that actually continues to get views. Uh, it's almost like giving a night, if you have a decent pe uh, amount of people who show up for your live streams, it's kind of a, an initial push on a, on a video. So if you take that video and you focus it on a particular topic and you record it in the way that you would do if you were going live, then when that's all done, you can go in, click the edit button on the YouTube video editor, trim off that front piece uh, straight up to your intro and uh, you're good to go. Then you have a piece of content that's as solid as the videos you would otherwise upload and you can optimize the title and thumbnail and metadata to actually uh, appear in front of more people and be able to get uh, views from that live stream as well. I really watch live streams on YouTube and this is the second one I've joined today. Meredith going all in on live streams. You know, we all have a lot of time on our hands these days. So uh, live streams are definitely a good way to step out of the house even when you can't uh, and uh, get a little social interaction because, you know, we're only a couple days into this. I can only imagine what this is going to look like on week three when we're all absolutely stir crazy in our house trying to reach out, get some type of uh, human interaction. I think this is going to get old really quickly, but hopefully we can uh, keep on keeping on. And for those of us who are YouTubers, use this extra time to make additional content. There's a lot more people logging in on YouTube right now, and you have a golden opportunity to take advantage of that increase uh, audience to put out more content than perhaps you normally would and try to bring in that. Use this as an opportunity. Find the silver lining, however you want to look at it, to make content and uh, take advantage of all those extra eyeballs. 
Soul Moon's rising. How are things in New York? Things in New York are completely shut down. All the colleges are closed. All the schools are closed. They've basically uh, closed. Well, they haven't closed all the bars, but they've made all the bars and restaurants do takeout only. Um, and we are, I think the, like the grade schools and high schools, etc., are out until, or uh, out of class until at least April. Um, I'm not sure what the dates are on the colleges and everything, but yeah, we're pretty much shut down. They've even gone as far as recommending that all private businesses have their employees work from home. So, uh, it is, it, it is significantly closed down. I am working, um, from home now for the foreseeable future, uh, next few weeks, at least depending on, we'll see where this all goes. Um, hopefully we would make a dent in it, but as much as I see positive things uh, with us here in New York, practicing the social distancing that we talk about with the idea of flattening the curve so everybody doesn't get this at once, you see stories out of Texas where a bunch of what I would have to classify as idiots all went there for spring break. And there were just a ton of people interacting with each other uh, for spring break somewhere down in Texas. And I can only imagine the um, spread of coronavirus that's going to come out of that mess because that was just a mad um, mob of people that uh, are obviously already way too, too close to each other um, and it's only going to get worse. So we'll see how all that stuff kind of happens and uh, see where all those kids were, uh, were from and where they go back to and what that all uh, looks like when it's all said and done. But I personally think we're not quite into the, the uh, mix of this yet. I would say over the next seven to 10 days, we're really going to see uh, what this means to us and how good of a job we've done at kind of slowing down uh, the spread. So Meredith says there's still crowds at the beaches in Florida. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, we're going to see people. There's a lot of people that don't, that aren't buying it. Um, they think that this is some international conspiracy. I don't know. Um, you know, I would certainly at least allow people to have that thought if it was just the United States, uh, with all the political bias that exists in our country, I would at least give them that say, okay, maybe it's just one side versus the other, but, um, very few people can pull off an international, conspiracy uh, to the magnitude that we're seeing here in South Korea and China and Italy and the United States. I'm pretty sure this is real. I'm pretty sure that uh, we should do everything we can to minimize the spread. And uh, if you're not doing that, you're really just, uh, I don't know. I have a hard time trying to come up with a, a good thing to say about you in that situation because uh, not so much for whether you think it affects you, but how it could potentially affect other people. So uh, if it's if it's a hoax like all these people who aren't paying any attention seem to think it is, then it will be the greatest hoax in the world, in world's history. I highly doubt that is the case. Um, I'm pretty positive that's not the case. I think those people are idiots, just to be clear. Um, I've clicked through 40 channels to gain a break from Corona Talk. Sigh. Yeah, you know, and it's it's it. It's kind of a, an interesting situation because nobody is living their normal life right now. Uh, and uh, But that's a good thing. So Arthur Brown says, I've clicked through 40 channels to gain a break from Corona Talk. What are you doing on your channel to provide content that provides that break for other people? There are going to be people out there that do not want to hear anything about the coronavirus. They're going to get tired of it. You have a golden opportunity based on whatever your channel is about to be that person who goes out and makes content that has nothing to do with the coronavirus. People are just looking for that escape, that break, and it's up to you. Anytime you're looking for change, uh, the best place to look is at yourself because that is the awesome opportunity that you can provide that change for other people. So I definitely think it's a really good opportunity, whether you want to mention that thing or not, uh, but make content, get out there. This is the time where we make content. If you don't take advantage of all of these influx of people who are sitting around their house waiting to watch content, then you're, you're just missing the boat here because you're at home, they're at home, you have extra time, they have extra time. It's the perfect storm to help you gain some serious traction on YouTube. Mohammed, I have great respect for you. Your videos are very good. I'm your fan. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Mohammed. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out on the live stream. 
great to have you here. Um, just getting into building out of business, which will include YouTube videos, live streams, courses, etc. Without searching it out, do you have a good link to apps to use um, that you recommend? Um, that's kind of a really wide question. I definitely have recommendations on what apps to use. Um, it really depends on what portion of that that you uh, want to um, tackle. If you're just generally looking at building a business, the very first app that I would go out and get is Evernote. Evernote is a basically a note keeping app that you can access through all your devices. So anytime you have an idea or a thought for your business or an idea for a video, you can hop into Evernote. You can organize it by notebooks. Um, so maybe you have a notebook that's video ideas. Maybe you have, you know, business stuff. Uh, you can set yourself up with like a checklist of like build your website and, uh, you know, learn how to do SEO and, you know, kind of go through all that stuff, get everything organized. I have probably 50 or 60 notebooks in that with a ton, tons of notes. I used it to um, help me plan people a video. I use it for video strategy uh, and content for each year definitely the first place I would start. Self-publishing with Dale is in the chat as well. Self-publishing with Dale, that's Dale Roberts. He is, uh, well, he was for 2020, the MC for People of Video Live. He's also a speaker, so you're going to definitely see him in the People of Video online event. Maybe I will rope him into doing a live stream that weekend as well to be able to reach out to everybody, interact with uh, the audience and, uh, um, you know, try to have a little back and forth, get a little bit of social interaction with the event. So, uh, good to have you here, Dale. And, uh, we're talking all things YouTube and, uh, you know, coronavirus, all that fun stuff. So everybody seems to be hanging out at home. File fish. Welcome to the live stream. Good to see you as well. OBS studio for free. Yes. OBS studio. Uh, I highly recommend that that's a great app. Uh, it gives you a ton of features for something that is completely free. You can go to, I think it's open, is it open broadcast project.org? I think maybe just search for uh, open broadcast studio and you'll find it. All right. I am still the MC. My role will just be a little less labor intensive. Absolutely. You will, you will definitely be the MC and hopefully, uh, you'll come back as the MC for 2021 when we do this, uh, proper in person live, uh, on stage, uh, here in Albany, New York. So we will be back to a live event by May of next year. That is our, um, we'll call it our goal. That is our, our absolute. That is what we're going to do in uh, May of 2021. Mm -mm -mm. All right, here. Toe Trucker, thanks for encouraging content. I got to get back to work. Right. Good evening to the chat. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. Have a good uh, evening working. I highly recommend stream elements, OBS.live. I've been meaning to download the OBS.live. Um, I've heard good things about it. So OBS, there's a couple different flavors. There's a stream labs version, and then there is the stream elements version, which is called OBS.live. Uh, that's actually the one that I'm probably going to try next. There were some reasons that I didn't go with Streamlabs, even though I use Streamlabs plugins that uh, I have. Well, I not, haven't really been using them on my, my live streams recently, um, but they do have a variety of plugins. But the OBS.live that Dale is mentioning, um, I have heard some good things about it, and I've been meaning to do that. And now that I have a little extra time on my hands, maybe I will do the OBS.live uh, uh, install and get that all squared away and set up a new, a new platform or a new... Uh, New setup for my lives. Family history fanatics, great to see you. Welcome to the live stream. What's your take on channels doing live stream? Oh, I hate channels that do live streams. <laughs> I uh, I'm here doing a live stream, so I'm uh, I'm pretty pro pretty pro channel doing live streams. Um, obviously you have to, uh, feel out your audience and figure out exactly what they are looking for and how best to serve, um, them with value on the live stream. It's going to be a little bit different for every type of content that you're doing, but, uh, yeah, live streams are a great way to be able to do this, to engage, to interact with your audience, 
uh, in a way that you're not going to get with your standard videos. Yes, they can post questions. Yes, you can respond to them, but it's that asynchronous communication uh, where this you have the opportunity to actually interact in almost real time. There's a little bit of a delay that gets kind of awkward here on live streams, but uh, uh, we can definitely um, have a more fluid conversation on a live stream than you're going to be able to have uh, in the chat on YouTube. So um, Dale says you still get uh, all the sweet features of OBS Studio. Stream L is just snazzed up a bit. Awesome. Yeah, I definitely need to do that. Welcome back, Chris. Does it help a channel to have age restriction enabled? Um, I think you should only enable age restriction when you make content that isn't appropriate for anyone under the age of 18. Otherwise, I don't know that that would serve a value, uh, a purpose for you. The best way to get your channel started with the most views, that would be to make amazing content that people can't stop watching. That is the way. You should always be focusing on making better content because the better you do uh, at making content that resonates with people, that provides whatever value you are targeting when you make that content, uh, having the uh, title and thumbnail that are focused on that particular topic so you're reaching the right people and then when they watch your videos, having them really appreciate the content, keep them watching as long as possible. And that's all there is to it. Simple as that. It's like the uh, the mystery of life or the purpose of life. How can I change my quality from 360 to HD? I guess that would depend on how you're recording your content. Um, if you're doing it on a phone, most phones have that setting. Um, one thing that I do when I make content on my phone, there are editing apps that allow you to upload directly from the editing app uh, to YouTube. I usually never do that. I will always export from the app to um, my uh, camera roll or whether Android, your photos, whatever they call it on Android. And then I use the actual YouTube app to upload. Um, but as long as you're making content that's HD quality, you should be able to upload it as that quality. The one thing to, to remember though, is when you first upload a video to YouTube, it becomes available at lower resolution, lower quality. So when you initially put that video up, you may be able to watch the video, um, but it's only going to show up as uh, as that 360 quality. And as you uh, or 260, I think it is right. Uh, whatever it is, the lower quality. And as they process it in the background, they're going to make higher levels of uh, quality available. So it may jump from whatever that baseline is that escapes me at the moment uh, to 720 and then uh, 1080. And if you happen to have put it up as 4K, you can get there as well. But uh, keep in mind when it first appears on YouTube, there is a possibility that it's not going to be the high highest quality, but it will get there. Joanna Taylor, thanks. Um, what is the right way for video SEO? Mm -mm -mm. Uh, I used in Computer Filmora 9. So yeah, you should absolutely be able to export out of Filmora in HD quality. Um, I imagine it's a setting there. I would think it's probably set to HD by default. But um, like I have Filmora, let's see, I have Filmora 8 installed. And when you first, when you go to export, um, I, I don't know how much it's changed, but like I would select MP4 as the format, and then it gives you the option to enter the name and where to save it to. And then there's a button called settings. When you click on settings, it allows you to go in and adjust the resolution. Um and it may be different on version nine for Filmora, but um, I imagine it's generally set up that way. Alexander Gaming and is that is that I'm I'm not sure what that and I'm not really sure how to pronounce that second part. Hi, I love your videos. They are so informative. Thank you so much. 
plug joy i i don't you're gonna have to give me you're gonna have to give me a hand on that last part there i'm not quite sure what that is but um welcome to the live stream great to have you here um Sorry, my kind of earlier was just looking for a bit of. Yeah, no worries, Arthur. I think at this point, it's such. It's such an impact on everybody's life that you can certainly have a conversation without giving advice on it. I think that's where the difference is. If you're out there trying to. Um, you know, give medical opinions and those kind of things, um, you know, and everybody's entitled to their opinion. I think it's really more important than what you choose to talk about for every individual to be smart enough to look into multiple sources for information. And uh, I would never advise anybody to form their opinions based on other people's opinions solely, but to uh, educate themselves. Just like if you're trying to learn on YouTube, I would expect nobody to simply only look at the content that I make to determine what's best on YouTube. There's certainly a lot of different opinions out there, a bunch of different people who make content about trying to be successful on YouTube. And I would highly encourage everybody to look at multiple different sources and then use your own brain to kind of figure out what uh, makes the most sense for you and the type of content that you're making and the schedule that you have, all these kind of things come into play to help you kind of guide, uh, guide your own path or figure out your own path based on, you know, some of the things that people share with you. All right. Um, Sab fam, it's what inspired me to start my own. Awesome. That's always the hardest part is starting. Uh, where do you stand on the argument of quality versus quantity? Is it more important to pump videos out or should you do less higher quality videos? Here's what I think you should do. Rather than debating whether you're trying, like, the idea that you are intentionally avoiding quality for quantity doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, and the idea that you're simply going to pump out as much garbage as possible with no consideration for um, quality or try to spend all your time making one video perfect. Uh, I don't really look at it that way. I believe that you start with your quality is going to be whatever your ability is. Like I, very few people actively try to put out content less than they're capable of. Um, but at the same time, uh, what I like to look at, the way I like to look at it is put out a video, do your best on the video based on what you know, and then figure out after that video is uploaded how you can improve it. Um, and do that at whatever rate you're comfortable with. If you can do more videos and you're actively trying to improve upon one after the other, then you can certainly put out more. Um, but rather than say, hey, I'm not I'm, I'm going to put out 10 videos this week. Worry about the video that you're working on. Uh, do the best you can without going crazy. Get the video uploaded. Perfection is the enemy of good. You just want to get in the process, the habit of uploading videos. And the more that you do that uh, with the eye for trying to make tr tweaks that make your content better, you will just progressively get better over time. I've heard the arguments on both sides that higher quality is going to get you more attention. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. And cinematic quality is not always the type of quality that gets you attention. Sometimes it's quality in terms of your ability to deliver whatever value it is that you're trying to deliver. There are videos that were made with a phone in somebody's hand like this that have millions of views. And then there are, you know, 
setups that were probably made with a red camera with you know the most expensive equipment that nobody's seen. So getting too caught up in in trying to understand quality, um, I think kind of sets people off and then it, it gets really discouraging if you think you made a quality video and you put all your heart and soul into it and nobody watches it, that can be really, um, you know, that can be really killer. YouTube is, uh, I think for most people is a learning process, unless you've come in with any type of video skills. Don't pretend like you're suddenly going to become a video producer overnight. Use the skills and the abilities that you have now, get that video out and then learn over time. Your first videos are probably gonna suck. Everybody's first videos suck, that's kind of the point, uh, because you've proven that uh, you didn't let sucky videos stop you. Uh, you are still going to continue moving forward. You're not gonna be afraid of what people might think of your videos. You're just going to upload them and move on, make improvements and keep going forward. I think that is the actual path to success. Um, versus trying to decide a strategy of a lot of videos or a few really, really good ones. That kind of stuff usually um, works itself out based on the type of content that you're making. How do you post a picture with a page or a comment about what's coming up on your YouTube channel. Do you have to have the 5,000 viewers to do that first? So I believe what you're referring to is the community tab. And I honestly, off the top of my head, don't even know. I think that comes with the YouTube partner program now. So I think it's 1,000 subscribers, 4,000 watch hours, channel in good standing, approval of the YouTube partner program. If anybody knows different, let us know in the chat. But I think... That they've that the community tab you'll see that with a thousand a thousand subscribers and then you can do things like sharing videos and post pictures and that kind of stuff um sorry the page cut me off i'm trying to load a picture with information about my next youtube video it's not letting me how many viewers do you have to have i think we just covered that Finally able to catch you live. It's a Rome thing every day. Uh, and others got laid off from being an evening cook uh, at Bennigan's restaurant have closed here in Iowa. Yeah, unfortunately that is uh, the case in a lot of places that restaurants and bars are either closing. We just had our favorite uh, diner in the area um, that we go on a fairly regular basis. They've closed until further notice because they tried to do the carry out only thing. And it just wasn't enough to support uh, support them, and it made more sense for them to close until all this blows over. So, yeah, it's definitely a tough uh, tough situation. Glad to have you here hanging out with us on the live stream, though. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully this will not uh, go on forever, and we'll get all this kind of uh, wrapped up and situated, and and you know get it to a point where it's just a story we tell our grandkids. Adventures in Dirt. Good evening, Dan. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Great to have you in the live stream chat and trying to catch up. I feel like I feel like the other day when I used this, the little blue arrow that pops up wasn't jumpy, but today it seemed like it jumped to the bottom. Eh, maybe we're okay. Maybe we're okay. All right. Mm -mm. Let's see, where is... <laughs> um, Dan, Kelly, Ross, and I had a ton of fun together last week. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we were down in Orlando um, not too long ago, a um, little over a week ago, for VidFest. Had the opportunity to speak there at VidFest. Uh, it was an interesting experience. Uh, glad to to have that uh, that chapter started. Plenty of work to do there, but uh, it was it was good. It was good to uh, get out and interact with people. Good to see Dale and Kelly, and Ross and Eddie Garrison. Uh, quite a few of our speakers for people video were down there, so it was great to see everybody. Uh, let's see. 
trying to keep okay there we go mm -mm -mm. Alexander our goal is to upload 100 videos have lots of fun with them awesome it is a good good approach construction crony says yes I do believe it's a thousand four thousand for the community tab um, important to note it's 4,000 public watch hours in one year hours must be public yeah that is something that YouTube changed or clarified it turns out that the old version of uh, the YouTube um, or creator studio actually was showing all the hours when in in reality it was actually just public hours that they count towards um, towards your uh, eligibility for the YouTube Partner Program. That means if you have a video or videos and you set them to unlisted or private, they don't count towards your watch hour totals. Paul Peck says, I think it's just a thousand subscribers and they get the community tab. Um, it could be the case as well. If it's outside the YouTube Partner Program, I honestly do not know. Has YouTube said anything about fixing that public watch hour thing because we are setting all our, our lives to unlisted or will they fix the algorithm so we can leave our lives public? I, why, why are you setting your lives to unlisted? My understanding, uh, yeah. What, what is it you think that they're gonna fix, Chris? Because it's my understanding that only public counts. So if you choose to put anything as unlisted, it's not going to count towards your, your watch hour total. I love lunches. How do you handle a copyright claim? Well, that depends. Did you it, If it is a bogus claim, then you can dispute it um, and explain why it's you don't feel that it's valid. If you got a copyright claim because you used somebody else's copyrighted content, um, then I would, uh, try to remedy that situation as quickly as possible. You can check out my video on how to use the YouTube, uh, video editor on how to identify the section of your video that is, um, infringing on somebody's copyright and you can actually edit it out. Uh, if it's the entire content, then you may just want to delete the video or, um, you know, figure out exactly what you're being asked to do. In a lot of cases, they'll tell you that you have, they'll identify that you're using copyrighted content, but they, they don't expect you to take any action. Um, other times they will say you have to take it down in 10 days or we will um, uh, delete it or do whatever. And other times they'll just come and give you a strike and delete the video. There needs to be some way to track public watch hours, regardless of the setting later. I think I understand what you guys, so are you guys basically saying that the live stream was public at the time that people watched? So therefore, if you set it to unlisted after you've already accumulated public watch hours, that those should count towards your total? Is that maybe what you guys are, are alluding to there? Yeah, I mean, that's certainly something that they can consider. Um, yeah. Everyone is leaving public. Um, public kills your average watch time and CTR. But I think the biggest question with that is what does your channel average watch time and CTR mean? I don't think that it has any meaning. If the argument that somebody cares what your channel wide click through rate is, I can't see how that would be meaningful because it's, I don't know. I mean, unless there's anything specifically that uh, YouTube is doing in the background to kind of grade your channel overall. Um, that part I don't know, but that is interesting. I know there are channels like, um, I think, does Nick do that now? Does Nick move his live streams to Unlisted? That I don't know. Um, I mean, I can certainly see the argument where live streams aren't necessarily a good fit for people who, you know, want to see your regular content versus a live stream because they can be hours long. But 
um, like click through rate to me, click through rate across my channel is pretty meaningless. Rosalie Muir, great to see you. Welcome to the live stream. Uh, all right. Any last questions? If so, tag at Creator Fundamentals. We're a little bit past nine, but I'm willing to hang out here for a little while longer. If you have any questions regarding YouTube, definitely tag at Creator Fundamentals. We'll do our best to hit those before we wrap up the live stream. Paul Peck says, because leaving your live streams public can possibly kill your audience retention. Then when YouTube suggests you're live, most people aren't going to watch an hour or more. So is that argument then that because they're suggesting one of your videos and people aren't? Yeah, see, I... <sighs> You're live. Most people aren't going to watch an hour. This is true. But I don't know that. Yeah, I'm still not seeing why that would matter for the rest of your content. Like how long somebody watches my one of my live streams has no bearing on how long people watch my other videos. So in order for a live stream to matter, like it, it's not like YouTube is saying, well, you have this regular video on this live stream. We're going to show them the live stream. And by having the live stream, it is taking away an opportunity from a regular video. Cause I don't know that YouTube is coming to your channel and, and, you know, deciding which of your stuff to promote that way. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it's not the case. I just don't, I'm not quite following why, why that would matter or how that would matter. But again, YouTube doesn't really share what they, how they look at a channel as a whole. We saw that thing a while back where certain channels kind of had these hidden scores. So it'd be interesting to see. So I, I get, Paul, that they could be suggested, but do you really think that if a live stream gets suggested that it's like taking away an opportunity from one of your other videos to get suggested? Like in order for the live stream to getting it suggested, to me, it would be, you know, like if one of my kids gets picked for the basketball team, it doesn't, you know give my other kid any less chance of playing baseball. I don't know. It's kind of weird that way. Like, I don't know how much there's interconnectivity between videos like that, but I've certainly heard people make that argument. I just don't, um, I'm willing to try it. Hell, why not? I just, uh, I just don't quite understand the idea behind it. It's better to have a hyper-focused niche videos, achieve that, and we'll get you suggested the lives are open topic. I wouldn't argue with that either. I just, it, it, in, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. We can always try it. I think I have more than enough watch hours to hide all my hide all my live streams and not have to worry about watch hours. But um, maybe I'll do that experiment. Maybe I will start. I'll start with this one. We'll start hiding live streams and we'll see if it has any noticeable impact on the channel that I can measure. All right, but we are, I don't see any questions popping up, but uh, yeah, Paul, I'm going to have to play with that and test that because um, it's interesting. We'll see what that does. You certainly have a channel that's uh, a uh, rocket ship, so definitely pay attention. All right. Um, I'd love to see you guys at People of Video. You can go to peopleofvideo.com and get your ticket to the online event now. 
Uh, and uh, yeah, I think that's I think that's it. I'd love to see you guys over there. Uh, if you are new to the live stream and you are not currently uh, subscribed to the channel, consider doing that and clicking the bell for future notifications. Uh, so you will be alerted when we do our live streams, um, which should be every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern. There'll be a lot more information coming out on people of video. Uh, so definitely stay tuned for that. It was great to see and talk to all of you this evening. Enjoy your um, social distancing. Stay safe out there, stay healthy. And uh, I will see all of you guys in the next live stream. Take care.